here's something I'd like to bring to you. Wrapped all in cellophane, designed for you. Tell you what it's all about. It is without a doubt. Swing in the latest style. Service with a smile. If you want to swing and shout, kick your heels and get about. I'm an errand girl for rhythm. Send me. Just get hip and follow through. I'll deliver straight to you. I'm an errand girl for rhythm. Send me. You could always find me down at Smokey Joe's. That's where all the smart and groovy people go. If you want variety, take a tip and follow me. I'm an errand girl for rhythm. Send me. You could always find me down at Smokey Joe's. Smokey Joe's. <laughs> That's where all the smart and groovy people go. Toe to toe, don't you know? If you want variety, take a tip and follow me. I'm an errand girl for rhythm. I'm an errand girl for rhythm, an errand girl for rhythm, an errand girl for rhythm. Send me. Yay! <laughs> Welcome to the University of Finley Art and Culture Show. I am Sharenda, your host. And as you have heard, we have some very special guests on set with us today. I'd like to welcome Julie Davis and Kelly Dow. They are also known in the jazz world as Davis and Dow Jazz Duo. Welcome to our set. Welcome to the University of Finley. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> you are very welcome. Thank you. <laughs> it's exciting to have you here. So. You are currently on a national tour and you perform your music in many different venues. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the sea. <laughs> We've got water, not near the us, sea. but there is the ocean and you have had the opportunity to, to sail internationally mm -hmm. with some really cool cruise lines. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that. Well, um, one of my favorite cruise lines that we've toured with is the Disney Dream, which was an absolute blast. And because you're allowed to be a kid and be creative and have fun, and we even went to Disney College, so we learned a lot about safety. <laughs> but... Disney College is really cool. I've taken some courses and I love Disney College. It's amazing. It is so amazing. It is. Can, and... can I say something though? Uh, yeah. We, we are, uh, there's a couple of things that happen on Disney. One thing is the little kids, they just, and we were playing jazz, yeah. just like what we played. They loved it. Yeah, they gravitate they're to They're always it. getting the characters' autographs, oh, the yeah. princesses yes. and the princes. Yes. And, and they always went up to Julie and Aww. said, Julie. <laughs> That's so Even awesome. though she wasn't a character, she signed lots of Oh, but of Julie's a books. wonderful oh, character. Oh, she is Anybody a princess. Anybody that gets to spend time with Julie. <laughs> she is they a princess. They know, yes, yes. Ah. <laughs> and a princess with many talents. We happy. are featuring music, but this lady can take pictures. Oh my goodness, amazing photographer. And both of you have a heart for saving animals and making sure they're safe. Yes. And so we yes. love that about both of you too. Thank you. We're an animal school here. So yes. yeah. Awesome. Yes. So back to the ocean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On Disney, you got to play and party with the little ones and yes. their parents. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And that was your favorite. So where are some of the other um, cruise lines? What were some of the other cruise lines? Because I know there were two other. Yes, we actually so. did uh, the world which is really cool. Uh, that's like, um, they don't even call that a cruise ship because it's like a floating condominium. Oh, wow. So uh, the people own, they don't call them cabins, they call them apartments. Oh. And so that's- So it's the same group that 
tours all the time and they bring in different it goes around yes. the world yes. uh, constantly ah. and you have s some pretty big wigs that have places on there so yeah. and that was great and what i've never yeah. heard of that that's <laughs> fascinating it, it was fascinating and the neat thing about it it's a smaller um vessel so we would go into smaller ports where sure. other cruise ships cannot enter because it was such a small yeah. vessel so we were able to go into the port in new orleans and some beautiful islands and it was a lovely experience so so wonderful yeah cool and then there was another one we did a cruise with larry elgart who it was a big swing cruise like yeah. you know you have jazz cruises and mm -hmm. swing music like a big band mm -hmm. music and so nothing but uh, big bands playing and people that wanted to listen and dance and celebrate so that was that was a lot of fun because we went we took a we went from new york to southampton and back but I packed for a Caribbean cruise, so I got to do some shopping because I was freezing. Cool. So it, <laughs> that's a long story. It's another story, but anyways, always research where you're going on a ship before yeah, you pack. Yeah. <laughs> on dry land, you had the opportunity to go to Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Tokyo. <laughs> what a special trip. And I've heard over many times that they absolutely love uh, 1980s, 1970s music, country music, and jazz. That's like their <laughs> thing. And so when I saw that you had the honor to go there, I was like, well, that checks that box, <laughs> swing and jazz. So tell us about that. Well, Tokyo was lovely. Um, we were there in the winter months and um, we were hired to play um, at a beautiful jazz club right in the heart of Tokyo in the Bisu Gardens and lots of uh, appreciation for the kind of music that we were doing. But we were there over the, the period of New Year's Eve. Oh. And so... What a neat way to ring in the year. It was really it neat, was. but the coolest <laughs> part about it was, in, in, in the States, we've seen all Lang Syme, and in and, mm -hmm. and a lot of places in Europe that's done as well. Mm -hmm. But in Tokyo, the, the song that they ring in the New Year with is On Top of the World by The Carpenters. So that was a really... <sighs> Fun little. <laughs> How interesting! It was. It was. It's certainly different. They're they're def the culture is definitely different there. And we got to do karaoke in Japan, which is the birthplace of karaoke, right. which was a lot of fun. We were taught how to do it right. So when we weren't playing after hours, they took us to a beautiful karaoke club mm -hmm. where you. It's a little more formal than it is in America, mm -hmm. where you kind of have your own suite with an intercom and you order your wine or your beer and your sushi and you have a private moment with your friends. <laughs> How cool. Yeah. That's neat. Thank you yeah. for sharing. <laughs> because I know that karaoke is a big deal over there, but I didn't realize that, you know, because when the students, we have international students that come here yeah. from Japan, yeah. they just want to do karaoke you know they're just excited to do karaoke oh yeah when we host fun. events on campus but i never gave it a thought that and it makes sense it's a more formal culture that it would be more um hospitable yeah because that's part of their culture yeah so it makes sense that you would have the privacy and the mm -hmm. enjoyment so yeah. thank you for sharing that <laughs> And then the United States. I love to go to jazz clubs in New York City. And I know it's awesome and big following in Chicago. Mm -hmm. But I also know just up the road in Toledo and Detroit, it's, mm -hmm. there's a huge population with the passion for jazz yeah. and swing. Sure. So share with us some of the really cool places that you've had the opportunity to perform. Well, you know, uh, I remember some of the people we played with. So when we were playing in New York, <clears throat> that was a showcase oh, situation. Yeah. yeah. And there were some real heavy hitters there. And name it, drop. Please name drop. Well, it was <laughs> Julie and I, and we were playing, and we had hired some musicians who accompanied us. Yeah. But all of a sudden, I, we hear somebody playing piano. And I'm closing my eyes, and Julie's closing, and we hear this beautiful piano. And Monty Alexander, who is... <sighs> Huge, amazing beautiful, jazz pianist. Beautiful gentleman. He just came in and started playing with us. <laughs> On stage, and that's the grand piano him. right next to us. Yeah. Yeah. That was like, wow, it, yes. it was magical for a few songs. It was absolutely magical to and an honor to play with yeah. such a beautiful. 
but another cat from New York who we have known for many years, who's passed from sight now, but mm -hmm. Dr. Lonnie Smith, who mm -hmm. was an integral part of my jazz education growing up in South Florida because he lived in South Florida, okay. but he moved to New York in his later years and, and toured and did a lot of work in Europe. But um, he, another New York cat that we played with who was phenomenal Hammond B3 player, yeah. piano player. Um, and this is something that's really special about jazz. If you really are a good musician and you sneak up and say, may I sit in, it's open, mm -hmm. yes. And just don't make us look mm -hmm. bad and <laughs> don't try and take over. And it's just it's this hospitality that's mm -hmm. part of jazz mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. so special. Mm -hmm. But it's because of where it comes out of, I think. Mm -hmm. It started in families. It started in small communities and then it birthed and became a bigger entity that people could identify with. Yeah, I mean, the thing about jazz music and, you know, even if you don't use a label, improvised music is that um, you have to have a huge amount of trust when you're on the, the stand with other people. You have to really trust who you're playing with, no matter what instrument you play, mm -hmm. and you're relying on them listening to you and communicating with you at all times. Mm -hmm. You can't drop out. You can't take a nap. It's, it's about being engaged mm -hmm. in that process of creating and improvising music, whether it's your own music or something you're improvising over that's a you know, great American songbook mm -hmm. or from Brazil. Mm -hmm. But it's all about engaging with each other and Feeling it. taking that energy and delivering yeah. it to the audience and making sure that everyone is engaged. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that if somebody is or, or if they're wanting to be the ego mm -hmm. of the group, mm -hmm. it's all about no ego. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why it feels that way and, 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 and it's treated sit that way. And I in the audience, and I know when it's improv compared to when it's the song. Mm -hmm. I have enough music experience mm -hmm. to understand the difference. Sure. But what blows me away is how it goes in and out of the improv, mm -hmm. and it looks like it's completely planned. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's part of and nobody misses a beat. I yeah. just, I love that. I yeah. love enjoying good jazz musicians. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I want to talk about someone that I absolutely love as a stand-up comedian. That's Bob Newhart. I'm oh. <laughs> going way back in the years and in the day. Okay. But I, I yeah. loved him as yeah. he's been in films that other people would recognize him, <laughs> younger generations today. Yeah. Yeah. But you were playing down in Florida, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was working the mm -hmm. same club? Well, for those of you who don't know who Bob Newhart is, um, he is a comedian that's been around for um, many, uh, many decades and um, has a very dry sense of humor. And he had a show in the, I believe, the 70s and mm -hmm. maybe into the, the 80s, the 80s yeah. called the Bob Newhart Show. Go ahead. Please. He was the father of Elf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> if you're familiar with Elf. The movie yeah. Elf, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, but so my father and I, yeah. anyways, the, the story kind of connects, but... Um, his tour uh, manager uh, was reaching out to um, different musicians on a local level to see. Um, he wanted to procure someone to open for Bob, and Bob loves jazz. And so he wanted a band to open at the Parker Playhouse, which is a, a beautiful venue down in Fort Lauderdale. And um, so Bob was doing a show there, and we were uh, procured, and we did three songs. and. Um, so I, one of the tunes that I thought I would do would be um, The Late Late Show because the, the, the connection is when I was a little girl, I used to stay up late and watch the Bob Newhart show with my dad mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. And that was our thing. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, I'm gonna do a song called The Late Late Show and I'm gonna end it, big ending, with the full band. We had upright bass, we had drums, Kelly, we had saxophone. So we did this song and we're out there and I have my gown on. I'm like so happy this is our closer and then Bob's gonna get on stage. And so I ended it with NBC. And that was in, and, and, cause yeah, you know, yeah. NBC, Bob yeah. Newhart. Yeah. So we do the show and then we wait out in the wings and we're so excited and he does the comedy and, and his jokes. And it was, he just brought the house down. He was sure. just timeless and funny guy. He comes back stage and we heard that he, you know, doesn't really like to hang out, doesn't really like to take pictures because, you know, he, 
He's private. He wants well, to go home. He's, he's tired. In his late 80s at this time. At the now time. in the mm -hmm. 90s. Yeah. So, so, so what happened was uh, he sees it. We we're waiting. We're yay, and he's like, hey, let's take some pictures. We took pictures and had a short conversation. And he said, you know, I really loved your music. It was great, uh, especially that last song. But I do have to tell you that I was on CBS. <laughs> <laughs> And so I just giggled it off and yeah. I said, oh, well, okay, I'm so sorry. And anyways, um, so we, you'll we never forget that, that conversation. I'll never forget it. <laughs> you'll never forget that he was conversation. He's such a lovely, generous guy. But that's my long Bob Newhart story. Yeah. It was fun. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you. Because I love it. I love it. Okay. So yes. we've talked yes. about what you've done in communities, mm -hmm. um, but there is something else that's near and dear to your heart. Yeah. that the two of you um, have worked with and created for educational purposes, and that's the Divas of Jazz. Yeah. And that is such a special show. So could you tell us a little bit about what that show entails? Yes. Um, we have been doing this show for about 20 years. <laughs> the show is a celebration homage to the great singers of the 20s, 30s, 40s. I mean, the, the singers that were the pop stars of the day, like mm -hmm. the Beyonce's and Billie Holiday, Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan. So it's not an imitation by any means. No. It's more of a, a celebration. Um, a celebration. Yes. And so the show encompasses um, their music, uh, short little just stories, interesting things that kind of introduce people that, that don't, may not know who they are mm -hmm. to these wonderful women mm -hmm. in jazz or people that may already know who they are. Just a few little seeds of information. Just that I love Ella. I love Billie Holiday. I love Sarah. And we wanted to do something that celebrated and got the word out to people and to students in schools or, you know, just kind of something that we could a, a, a way that we could celebrate their music, but um, not just one. We could interchange. We could do Carmen McRae, mm -hmm. Anita O'Day, and and bring it into colleges, bring it into black box theaters, and just with a guitar and just voice. And we've added multimedia, which we would have pictures mm -hmm. of Ella Fitzgerald and various uh, stages of her life mm -hmm. singing, and we'd also play little quotes and from Duke Ellington about mm -hmm. her voice or poetry. So it just, it opened up a lot of creativity for ourselves and helped us to get the word out. Yeah, and it's, it's yeah. history. It's a it's history, history lesson. Yeah. And so many of our schools don't have time for the history. Yeah. Some aren't even doing music programs anymore. For so sure. the fact that you're able to introduce individuals mm -hmm. yeah. to this style this genre and these very strong women yes. because it was a man's world within music at that time too mm -hmm. and some of these women went through the stages where because they worked for a certain gentleman they were told they were communist and they were this and they were that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. during some of our tensor times mm -hmm. in the u.s mm -hmm. so i love the fact that you were able to take your passion and then build a very moving show around the women that gave you your music. Thank you. It's really yeah. cool. And you're right. I I've mean, been saying that word a lot. No, cool. no, it's cool. It's a great <laughs> word. <laughs> I mean, we, cool. we know that yeah. these women faced a lot of oppression they and did. racism and, and sexism. And, um, and many times didn't get paid. Didn't get paid. After and, they were promised. And a lot of them were treated as decorative items mm -hmm. rather but uh, uh, these women that that are you know the the forebearers of jazz vocals in, in those eras they they were very strong minded strong willed yes. and a lot of their history is very similar how they they were it, it, certain things were non-negotiable mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, how they made things better for women the future after them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes so that's wonderful now yeah. let's talk about the two of you how many years have <laughs> you been Davis and Dow? It's been like 10, right? Mm. <laughs> Times three? <laughs> Maybe. 30 years this year we've been together. I can't believe that. Congratulations. Thank you. What Thank an you. adventure. 
It is. It is. It is. Um, you talk. He's not allowed to talk. No, I'm <laughs> well, no, what, uh, what kind of adventure is it? <laughs> you know, we were talking about the divas, and we both, and I think most artists in any field uh, feel how important it is to know the roots and the beginnings, mm -hmm. and we both feel that way. So I think musically, we fell in love musically mm -hmm. first. First. And, and and then but became I, really good friends. Yes, yeah. yes actually, best that's friends. True. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I can tell by the way you still look at each other that <laughs> you have that friendship first. We like each other. I know you do. And I kind of like the way he plays guitar. And yeah, it's well, <laughs> and I love that before we even started the show, you understand that his his uh, mistress is his guitar. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's always been his guitar, yeah. and I respect that because. When you meet somebody and they have a passion for cooking or playing music, is, this is a hard instrument to play and to be very good at it. And he has to work at it, not, he has to work at it to stay at the level the he practice, wants. Yeah. yeah, practicing, but you know, just constant, he's always learning new things and, and pushing himself and he's a great teacher as well. And, mm -hmm. But I mean, I knew when I met him, like he had to practice to be happy. Mm -hmm. to it's like a, an athlete you have to work out mm -hmm. if you if you're going to be happy with yourself as what you're putting out there in the world and so I always knew that there's got to be a certain amount of space to give him and to understand that's who he is and that's why I love him mm -hmm. he's that way mm -hmm. he's that guy you know and that's cool yeah thanks that's cool. again I'm again a... oh my gosh <laughs> Well, you're cool, Sharita. <laughs> yeah. We think that you're pretty darn cool. I just touched thank my mic, you, sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you. So, 30 years mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. an adventure. Yes, absolutely. And some cats Lots and of cats. some memories of cats. to go with it. Yes. Could you do us a favor as we wrap up this interview? Could you play us another song? Yes, we would we love, love to. to. Okay. <laughs> so I want to thank everyone for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed getting to know Kelly Dow and Julie Davis. We are one Davis and Dow duo of jazz. Uh, they are going to play some music for us as we close out this um, chapter. And we look forward to seeing you the next time. Until then, be well. Boop too. The duck was dancing by the water. Quack, quack, quack. The rhythm made it make it order. Quack, quack. He was dancing to the samba, the samba, the samba. Oh, goose so. The goose was gay and passing by. Honk, honk, honk. He stopped and gave the dance a try. Honk, honk. The bossa nova had him dancing. A new thing, the new swing. And a lovely swan swam by in all the majesty that she loosened up. Coochie, coochie, coo, did that swan. <laughs> she joined the duck and goose and did the samba too. You should have seen the kind of samba she could do. They did the samba so long they up a right in the water. While they were dancing away, ding, 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 ding. Samba, the samba, the samba, they were dancing to the samba, the samba, the samba, they were dancing to the samba, the samba, the samba, they were dancing to the samba. Bye bye.